So this is uh, Sunday night, Holy Ghost night. You're all ready to worship the living God? Yes. Um, ready to enter in and let the Holy Spirit move? Yes. So why don't you get up on your feet? We're going to enter it now and just worship God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Too busy, too busy. 
Thank you for your comfort, oh God. Thank you for comfort in this place. Thank you for your, your, your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding, oh God, that, that leads us and directs us, oh God. We thank you that you are here. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are in this place and you are, you are working in our hearts and in our lives. And we give you praise and we give you glory. We give you glory. We thank you, God. We thank you. You are so good. So, so, so good, oh God. And we'll give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Well, the Lord is good. Amen. Yes. You believe that tonight? Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Nice. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord, we just magnify you in this place. We give you honor. <coughs> we give you glory. Some rebels and rebels and rebels and rebels and all the worship is back by Lord should live. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just we just make room for you tonight. There's nobody like you. We honor you tonight. Holy Spirit, we honor you. Yes. We just honor you tonight in this place. We honor you. Thank you for all that you do. Nothing's too hard. Nothing's too hard. Nothing is too hard for you. Oh, we give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, 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 you thank you, Lord. 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 Give you all the honor. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, ladies. How are you? It's nice to have you here. I, I remember you. You, you must have followed uh, Pastor Michael up here. Yeah, all right. Hallelujah. It's good to see you. It's nice to have you here tonight. Would you stand up? Some If I miss it, you just tell me. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There's just, there's just some issues with your blood sugars that just kind of get up and down. They get up out of control. Cause you some, some, some real problems. I, I see you almost just having to stop and catch your breath sometimes. Yeah, put your hand in there. Just try to catch your breath and, 
and uh, because uh, the blood sugars, they, they play a big part. But see, uh, if, if he shows me that, I know he wants to heal. Would you receive that? I, say, I, don't, even, I don't know you. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Father, what's your name here? Mary. Mary. Father, I thank you right now for Mary. We thank you, Lord, for touching. Lord, if you showed it, then you're going to do something. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to you're going to move in those organs and control the sugar levels, Father God. Yes, Everything that is out of order in this body, Father God, we speak to it in Jesus' name. We come into into alignment, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And what was your name, dear? Susan, would you stand up too? Hallelujah. I don't know that. Have I met you before, Susan? You're in worse shape than she is. <laughs> is that right? I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, uh, Father, I thank you right now. And Susan, Father God, I thank you, Lord, you are working in her body, Father God, affecting healings and the cure, Father God. Lord, those things that, that uh, just that are starting, Father God, there's things that are getting started that they don't get stopped and they're going to cause them a problem. But Lord, we're going to short circuit those things tonight. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God. Even, even when she gets up tonight to leave, Father God, she's going to notice a difference in her body. She's going to notice a difference, Father God, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you, you start backing away from the sugar again, didn't you? I know you did. You told me that you did. He said, now, if, you, if you'll keep doing that, things will get a lot better. You won't have some of the problems you've been having. Just because they cause the problems. Okay? He said, you already start backing away. So just keep on backing away. I can see it in you. It looks much better. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. How do we just magnify you tonight? We glorify you tonight. Nothing too hard for the Lord. Is that Margaret back there? Hi, Margaret. How are you? The last time you were here, we ministered to you, and you're smiling tonight. There was some things, some big changes were going to have to take place that we prayed for. Uh, did, did those changes begin to happen? Did, 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 do you remember what it was? Did those things begin to change? They did. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It was a treat to have uh, Dana and Joanne with us. That was just really unexpected tonight. We may get you up there before the service is over. I don't know. I think there's a guitar yeah. hidden in a case over yeah. there. So. Yeah, whatever. So. Well, we'll see. It's just, these things are just as the Spirit wills. You know, these are not orchestrated. We don't know what's going to happen, how things are going to happen. We just we just get in and we just enjoy the ride. Yeah. yeah. Holy the Holy Ghost, he, he could just... He gives you the best rides, yes. the, the biggest thrills. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. He's good. He's just good. He's just good. Thank you, Lord. Awesome bone, the bronco, the bronco. Let's all pray in the Holy Ghost together. He brought me down, 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 Risha Bonsh, Oh, we just we just magnify you tonight. Magnify you. Holy Spirit, you're so, so welcome here. We desire you, we want you, we hunger for you. We search after you. We are in a dry and thirsty land. There is no water, but Lord, you're the source tonight in this dry and thirsty world. You're the one that we drink from. So we thank you tonight. Thank you tonight, Father God. We magnify you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
You know, when you get some, some, when the praise and the worship it just gets into that place, you know, there's a lot of churches, they just have song services, and, yeah. and uh, but I, we don't have a song service, <laughs> and just, we come to worship, we, yeah. we come to praise and we come to magnify Him, yeah. and you say, well, you guys take an awful long time, I say, well, we do, yeah, but... <laughs> We don't mind. He doesn't mind. He's, he's never once ever corrected us for taking way too long to praise or magnify him. He just, he just, he loves it. You can put up Acts 13, verses 1 and 2. Acts, is, Acts 13, 1 and 2. There's just a wonderful little secret in there. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, <laughs> such as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and the of Cyrene and Manian, which had been brought up with here to Denmark, and saw and as he ministered unto the Lord and fasted. It's just there's, there's a place in the body that, in church where most of the time people come for the Lord to minister to them. But there's a place in the church where we minister to him. See, God has a desire for, to hear you praise Him and yes, worship Him. Yes. Okay? He desires to hear. Now, you say, well, why would He desire our praise and our worship? He's got <laughs> angels all around the throne room that are worshiping and they're bowing down and everything else. They have to. Okay? And so it's kind of mandatory. Mm, yeah. But ours is voluntary. Mm -hmm. And so there's a difference between voluntary and mandatory. Okay? Yes. And so we do it because it's in our heart to do it. We want to do it. And, and we had some visitors here a few weeks ago, and they, they sent an email, and they commented on our service, and, and they, they went to a, a fundamental church, and, but it wasn't a Holy Ghost church. And so they had a lot of questions about you know, how our service ran and, and what was with that. Trumpet that was blown. Why were they blowing a trumpet like that? It makes sense. So, so we, we we wrote back. Miss Kim wrote back and, and explained to him, you know, as best that we could, um, uh, about why there there's a shofar in the church because it's not in their church. And a lot of the things they saw here, because they said, you know, we drive by here all the time and we we really wanted to come and just see what was going on here. <laughs> well, they did. They found out and. And much of it was strange. That's not that strange to us, but sometimes you have to remember that other people think that this is weird, this is strange. They're blowing trumpets and people were prostrate on the floor. What is that? Yeah. Like people stretched out on the floor like that. Yeah. Well, again, it's all scriptural. And, but when you're in that place, you know, where, of, of worship, you could kneel, you can prostrate yourself. Yeah, yes. And uh, and the Psalms, it's a thing, you know, you sang and you sang. Sang and sang, and then you sang the same same chorus, the same verse, over and over and over. What is that? Why? Why would you do that? It's because the Holy Spirit wants to make a point to us, and so sometimes we just have to hear it over and over, because faith comes by hearing. So we need to hear these things just over and over again. So. We were explaining, but not making excuses for what we do. That's right. Amen. Never do and then there was those tongues. Oh. <laughs> People praying in tongues. Oh, and so yeah, we, they were, but they, we understood that we understand that, that if there's tongues, there has to be interpretation. Oh. So we had to explain to them there's a difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit yeah, yeah. and praying and speaking in other tongues and even yes. speak and singing in other tongues yeah. than the gift of tongues. The yeah. gift of the tongues has to be interpreted if it's a manifestation. But praying in the Spirit like we do and did tonight, singing in the Spirit, uh, those things uh, do not need to be interpreted. Now they can be. You can ask the Lord for those things in your private prayer life and say, Lord, uh, what is the interpretation of what I've been praying? And, and you can ask the Lord for that and he can give it to you, but it's not necessary or mandatory. Hallelujah. Well, why don't we look into the Word uh, for a little bit tonight? Yes. Yeah. And just see uh, what 
what God's got for us tonight. Oh, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I felt like you gave me a couple of scriptures tonight. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we just kind of go over some of the same things over and over again. And maybe we wrap them up in a little different package to make you not know that you're getting the same thing again. <laughs> throw some other extra ingredients in. But uh, again, the Bible says to admonish one another, which means to say the same thing over, teach the same thing over and over again. You know, we think of Jesus, you know, when he taught the Sermon on the Mount, you know, and he taught that every place he went. Yes, he did. Okay. He taught, and he taught Isaiah 61. He'd find a place where it was. Actually, why don't you go, go to Luke chapter 4 for a moment. Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 16. And when he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, as his custom was, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue. On the Sabbath day. So, what was his custom? He would go in on this um, into the, a synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he would stand up and read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He was looking for a particular scripture because it was about him. Okay. And so it says, "Lo, in the volume of the book, it is written of thee. You're in here too. All right. You're in this book." The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering the sight of the blind, and set at liberty them which are bruised, and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now remember, he did this every Sabbath. My son Greg has a teaching that uh, uh, he, he counted up the number of Sabbaths that were in Jesus' ministry for three and a half years. And he did this every Sabbath. He was in a different synagogue. And it was several hundreds of times. So he would, every place he would go, he would tell the people that I'm anointed. Mm -hmm. I'm anointed. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. And if they would believe it, they could, they could receive. Not everybody believed that when he went to his own hometown. That's right. See, in some circles, they teach that Jesus healed everybody to prove he was the Son of God. But when in, in his own hometown, it said that he could there do no mighty works. He tried, but couldn't do it. So he didn't prove he was the son of God. They also believed that Jesus healed everybody or anybody simply because he was the son of God. Well, he was the son of God, but he left his divinity, his glory in heaven. Philippians chapter 2 tells us that, that he, he took on the form of a servant and became a man. Okay? And then we find out in Acts 10, 38, we put that one up there too, Jenny, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Christ is, is being the, the anointed one, and the anointed, that's the word Christ. But it doesn't say God anointed Christ, because Christ is already anointed. But Jesus, the, Jesus called himself the Son of God, or the Son of Man. And so Jesus, the humanity part of him, needed to be anointed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So he had to be anointed to do what he did. Mm -hmm. Just like we have to be anointed to do what we do. There's anointings to, I don't have the same anointing that Miss Kim has, I don't have the same anointing that Miss Campuga has, uh, I don't have the same anointing that Bill has, thank goodness. So, Got to get something in there. I missed you this morning. <laughs> missed you. Where's Cap? But we all have, we all have different anointing, and, and it complements each other. It complements everything. And so, uh, in trying to explain some of these things to this one lady, she had some health issues, and we'd call her and minister to her, her husband, and uh, we asked her, you know, you know, if she would like to be healed. She said, Yeah, if it's his will. And so then we had to take the entire service to talk to her and show her from the Word of God that it was God's will to heal her. Yes. And so, because sometimes you've got to talk people into getting well. <laughs> so, anyway. So, we're in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter... Oh, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. 
Second Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen. Now thanks be unto God, which sometimes <laughs> causes us to triumph. Wow. Once in a while, no. if you get lucky, no. maybe, perhaps, could. No. Says now. Now, how many believe this is the Word of God? Yes. yes. Okay. How many believe that this is the inspired Word of God? Yes. Okay. How many believe this is the unadulterated, uncompromising Word of God? Yes. 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 And it is. And so it's going to tell us something that it might rock your boat tonight. Right. And that thanks be unto to God, which always... Everybody say always. Always. So after an exhausted search into the Greek and breaking it all down, always means always. <laughs> always causes us to triumph. Yes. Well, I don't know about that, Pastor. <laughs> no, well, either he told the truth or you're being led by your feelings. Yes. Because mm -hmm. yeah. there's a lot of times we do not feel like we are triumphing, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we are. Amen. Yes. We are. Why? Because he said we were. That's yes, right. Thanks be unto God, which always, mm -hmm. always causes us to triumph. Mm -hmm. Well, I just feel like such a failure. Well, stop going by your feelings. That's right. Let's go by the word of God. Yes. Let's, let's say that part together. Now, thanks be thanks unto God, God, which always, 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 which always causes me, causes me to, triumph. to triumph in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Glory to God. And so that just simply means that we always triumph. There is no possibility of failure yeah. in any of us. Right. You and I are victor. See, we've been taught, religion teaches that we're the victim yeah. and not the victorious one. But the Word of God tells us and teaches that we are the victorious ones. Always. All the time. Even when it doesn't look like you're victorious, right. when it doesn't look like you're triumphing, That's when you right. don't feel like you're triumphing, all yeah. the circumstances said you're not triumphing, right. you are still triumphing yes. at the end. Oh, yeah. Because you you are going to you're going to make it. Amen. God's, it's are. already been preordained that you if you'll stick with God, you always are going to win. Amen. Yeah. I remember somebody said to me one time, they said, that uh, they knew me quite well. And you go through some really difficult times in the ministry with, with people and different things. And, and they said that, that Pastor Bagley, you're just like a cat. You always, you always land on your feet. I, I tried that one time. You take a cat and you turn it upside down. And you, well, then, <laughs> dogs, no, that don't work with dogs. But cats always turn, they land on your feet. And so that is the same with you and I. And so when we get this, we have to get the mind of Christ. We have to get this, this mentality. We don't need the mentality of the world. Because the world says you're a failure and you're going to fail. You're no good. You're not going to have it. This serving God isn't going to pay off. And, and look at your kids. Look at your family. Look at all the things around you. Come be like me. No, we don't want to be like you. We want, to, we want to be like what God's called us to be. So when we come into into walking with God, we come in with a with a with an attitude that that He that I win, that I am a winner. Okay. There's a song. I probably shouldn't say this, so, but I, there's a song, an old country song, called "I'm a Winner." We would play it for you, but we won't play it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and in then this, this song, the guy is, he's sitting at a bar, and he, he's a big guy, but uh, he has got scars and bruises and, and false teeth and all these different <laughs> things. And, and he's been in so many fights, but he's won all the fights. And so this young guy comes into the bar and finds out who he is and he wants to challenge him. Well, 
this, the guy at the bar really doesn't want to fight. So he starts talking to this young man, and, and he says, you know, uh, uh, I understand, you know, you, you want to be a winner. He said, uh, you can you, you be a winner like me. He says, you know, I just got my jaw wired back into place, and, and you know, my nose has been broke so many times, and, and I can pop my glass eye out, and talk, but I'm a winner. <laughs> and so at the end of the song, uh, has anybody ever heard that song? Good. <laughs> he, he, just, he, just, he said, <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to you're gonna go through some battles. That's all I'm saying. You all, we all are. But you know what? We always win in the end. Amen. Even when it looks like you're, you're losing, right. you're still winning. Right. If you don't quit, if you don't give up. Amen. And, and we, we're not people that, that are, are quitters and we don't give up. Amen. And if you're going through a hard time, the Bible says, you know, that that when you go and you fast, you know, uh, it says comb your hair, wash your face, and put a smile on your face and don't let anybody know you're fasting. Mm -hmm. But there's those that want everybody in the world to know that they're fasting because they look sad, they look terrible, they look sick, and people say, what's wrong with you? I'm fasting, oh Lord. <laughs> no, we, we, we put a smile on our face, we wash our face, comb our hair, and we just, we just go on and we don't have to tell people you know, that we're going through a battle. I, I don't know, as a pastor, uh, Pastor Michael can uh, uh, attest to this, you can just look at a person and you can see the battle is raging. <laughs> oh, you can see. But there's very few people that, that uh, when you see them, uh, and they got a smile on their face, you just, you just don't know that they're going through something. Why? Because they're, they're not letting it out to the whole world to know that they, they're, they're going through something. But when we realize, thanks be unto God, which always, always, you are always in the end, you're always going to triumph. Amen. So when we get this mindset in us, we get this mentality that uh, 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 I, am, I am a winner, I'm going to win. Glory. Everything, Glory. even though no good win right now, it's still going to turn, it's going to turn around for me, it's yeah. going to uh, turn around in, in this situation. And so, I'm a winner. Say that I'm a winner. I am a winner. Not because, Not because. anything I've done, anything but, I've done. Jesus. but Jesus Jesus has already won, has has already won. won. the victory. The victory. Yeah, we go to First Corinthians now. Just go back a couple pages. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Hallelujah. Verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory. Hallelujah. So he gives us the victory. Yes. Amen. So it looked like, to all intents and purposes, that he had lost. Mm -hmm. That Jesus had lost. Why? He, he died on the cross. He was beaten and he was shedded and, and he was nailed to the cross and then they took his body down and they, they, they put it in a, in a grave. And as far as everybody was concerned, it's, it's all over. It was just all over. But it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all over. In fact, it was just getting started. <laughs> and it was in this place that he got the victory for you and for me. Yes. So thanks be to God, which gives us the victory. Yes. The victory. You say, well, yeah, but I know that somebody died. Did they die in the Lord? Yeah, well, then they're in heaven, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Right. The absent from the body is to be present to the Lord, with the Lord. We win. Yeah. Right. We win. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Right. We just win. Right. You know, if, if, you, if, you, if you die and, and you go to heaven, you've won. Yes. Yes. I don't know about you, I, I don't want to live down here forever. Okay? You know, New Brunswick is, is a beautiful place. It's one of the, you know, one of the most beautiful provinces it there is. is. But then there's those pesky black flies and those mosquitoes. You know? I mean, those, those mosquitoes this spring, they, they came out just within hours. I mean, you just, you opened the door one night on the way out and there were swarms of them just swarmed in. Okay? And then when we would, years ago, we'd, we would be going out to the worship barn and, and I would have Kathleen with me, yeah. and Diesel, and Michael, yes. and uh, Miss Carol, and a number of people sometimes in, in my van. And we would have to, I'd tell them, 
hurry up and get in yes. so the mosquitoes don't get in. That's but right. with diesel, he, we've got to flip the gate up, yes. and he takes this good old sweet time. Come on, diesel, get up. Get up, diesel, get up, come on, diesel, come on, get up, diesel, come on, jump up, jump, 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 jump. So then we got to drive three quarters of the way back to Fredericton, you know, like 80 kilometers an hour with all the windows open, trying to suck out all the mosquitoes. True story. Winter is sometimes winter. <laughs> appreciate winter without the mosquitoes. But uh, you know, they're just temporary. They just they, they don't last forever. But there's a victory that we have that and, and we need to get that down in our heart. That no matter what happens, I win. Yes. Because he has won already Amen. for me. Amen. My uh, champion, my champion Amen. has won this for me. I didn't do it. Amen. The Bible says that 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 we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen. That loved us, and I, I like the, the 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 picture of um, I like boxing, and um, uh, I liked one of my favorite boxers was Evander Holyfield, and he was somewhat of a Christian. He talked about the Lord. Well, I like George Foreman too. He was a Christian, yeah. and uh, uh, he was heavyweight champion of the world, and then he he lost the championship, and he retired, and he went into the ministry and. Yeah and had a youth ministry with kids down in Houston, Texas, and, yes. and he was wanting to build a gym for the kids. And uh, uh, he'd gotten older and put some weight on, and, mm -hmm. and, but he got saved and he was just in love with God. He was a kind of, he was a, his first time around, he was, a, he was not a nice person, he was fierce, you know. And, yes. and, uh, <clears throat> But over time, he, he fell in love with the Lord and God just mellowed him out. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to raise money for this gym for these kids out in the streets, and, and he's having trouble raising the money to do this. Mm -hmm. And the thought came to him, well, he could make enough money just going back into the ring one more time mm -hmm. and winning a fight. He says, I'd make more money fighting. And so to raise money for his gym for the kids, so he went back into the ring, and lo and behold, he won the fight. Wow. They said, ooh, it's so good to have you back, George. You're kind of old, but uh, you really shouldn't be in if you're too old for this. And he says, what's my next fight? So they lined him up with another fight. He won that one, and it wasn't very long. Within a year or two, he was fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world wow. again. Wow. And he won the heavyweight championship when he wasn't supposed to. Every, everything was against him. Yeah. His age, his weight, you know, yes. he'd been out of it for so long. Yes. See, on the inside, he was still a winner. Yes, right. yes. He was yes. on the inside. He said, I can yes. do this. Yes. We're seeing more and more fighters coming back and they're saying, you know, I can still do this. I can still put on a pretty good show. Yes. Because there's something on the inside that says, I'm a winner. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's too bad that more Christians don't have that attitude. Yeah. We're winners. Yes. We're winners. We're yes. victorious. Now, now go with me over into Acts chapter 27 tonight. Acts chapter 27. I know I'm not telling you anything you haven't heard before. Good. But it just seems, for whatever reason, this Lord just seems to be leading that direction. So we'll, we'll, just, we'll just follow the Holy Spirit tonight. Hallelujah. So you given me any songs yet? Yeah. Uh, I thought so. Hallelujah. Acts 27. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Um, you know the story here. Paul has been arrested mm -hmm. and he's on his way to Rome. Mm -hmm. And uh, verse 9, Acts 27, verse 9. It says, Now when the time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous mm -hmm. because the, the fast was already passed. In other words, the, the weather they were they were the weather was going to change very quickly, and the seas would get really bad. And there was just a, a particular time of the year that there was just great storms. It wasn't safe to sail, but this particular day was a, like here in Perth, a beautiful day. And, and uh, uh, the owner of the ship uh, said what he wanted. He thought we let's go ahead and sail. We're, we'll be okay. 
And he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be much hurt and much damage, not only of the lading, uh, that, that's the cargo, and the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken of by Paul. And so they begin this journey heading towards Rome. It says in verse 14, but not long after that there arose a temp tempestuous wind called an El Rachdodon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the winds, we let her drive. And then and running under a certain island, which they called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat. And when they had taken up, they were used helps for undergirding the ship. They would, but somehow they had ropes. They could to just get ropes and, and get it underneath the ship and then tighten them up to keep the ship from falling apart, you know? <laughs> just, you know, just strapping it up. And so they put the undergirding. And uh, lest that they should fall into the quicksand, they struck sail and were so driven. And we, being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lined the ship. They start casting unnecessary things over the side. They didn't think were too necessary. And it says, uh, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Now when neither sun uh, nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay upon us, this was not a three day nor'easter. This was a demonic storm of demonic proportions. Because it, it went on, it, it was a cyclone, it was a hurricane of, of unimaginable proportions that stayed and stayed and stayed. They do say that that can happen, that uh, hurricanes can, can stall out and they, and they just spin. If the water is warm, they just spin in a certain place. It was happening here. It says that when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, no small tempest had upon us, all hope that we should save, be saved was taken away. And all hope is gone. All hope is gone. But after long abstinence, they were heeding. Paul stood up for us in the midst of the storm and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. And don't you love that? Be kind of a person. I told you so. I told you so. Yeah. And so you wives can, can appreciate that. You should, have, you should have listened to me. You should not have loosed from Crete and have gained this harm and loss. And now exhort you uh, to be of good cheer, for there should be no loss of any man's life among you, but the ship is going to be lost. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, of whose I am and whom I serve. So powerful right there. He was saying, uh, an angel came. We like angels. We like to teach about the ministry of angels. But but he said that he, he, he got past the angel and he, he started talking about the one that he lived and served. He says that it, 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 this next to the angel of God, of whose I am, I belong to God. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you belong to God? Yes. yes. Do you belong to God? Yes. yes. Seriously, do you belong yes. to God? Yes. yes. I belong if you to belong God. to God, you can. Fail. Right. You cannot fail. And Paul, let's come back to Paul's mind of, who's, uh, of, 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 of God, of whose I am and whom I serve. You have to be serving him. Yeah. Oftentimes the word serve can mean a slave, but it also means worship. Whom I yes. worship. Right. Yeah. And so even when things are going wrong and, and it looks like all hope is gone, uh, Abraham says over in Romans 4, uh, I think it's verse 18, it says that basically when all hope is gone, he said he believed in hope but when there was no hope. See, when things aren't, aren't working right, and that's going to happen in our lives. It's already happened to you before, but you got through it. Yep. You made it. Yes. And you should remember that. God got me through this. He got me through that. He, yes. You don't want to get you through whatever you might be in two weeks tonight. Right. Yeah. Don't get you through it. That's right. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many that so if I should see, be, go back to uh, uh, Acts 27, please. Back to where we, we just left off. Verse 23. There stood by, stood by me this night the angel of God. Did you know angels stand alongside of you? Bill? Yes. Angels stand right alongside you. Do you know that? Yeah. Are you aware of that? I believe that. Every day there's angels on top of you. 
Yeah. And they don't leave you. They don't depart. Bill's in a grumpy mood or nothing. Not, you know, they don't leave you. No. Not that Bill would ever be in a grumpy mood, but yeah. uh, they, they're there. Yes. They're, they're all they're there with you. Yes. Huh? We just don't always see but they're there. Yeah, they're here. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. Oh, what peace that brings to us. We were just singing about peace tonight. Yeah. Peace, yes. peace. Angels are there. God has dispatched angels to stand by you Amen. and to help you. Okay? And so we are we are not to neglect so great a salvation okay. or the help that these angels can bring to us. If you neglect it, there can be some problems. So we don't neglect anything. Okay? And the angel said, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. Everybody say Caesar. 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 So it, what's he saying? You're not going to die. Amen. But it looks like I'm going to die. The storm says I'm going to die. The captain says we're going to die. All of the people on the ship say we're going to die. But this crazy angel comes and oh, you're not going to die. In fact, you've got to go to, you've got to go see Caesar. So that's the plan. That's God's plan. They're saying, you might look like you're not going to make it, but that's, that's not the case. You're going to make it. You, you've got to be someplace. You've got to say something to somebody. You've got to do something. You've got to sing a song at a certain place that will change the atmosphere. Amen. Skin. You've got to sing. You've got to magnify. You've got to preach. You've got to share. Why? Because it will change everything. You have to. Amen. Yeah, but it doesn't look like nothing is working out that I could do this. What difference does that make what it looks like? God's got, got a plan. Yes. He's got a track. You guys need to go get ready now? Yeah, go on up here and get ready. We'll keep talking for a little bit. Say, fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all of them that sail with thee. And he goes on to say, verse 25, Wherefore, <clears throat> where are we at? Wherefore, verse 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Cheer up. Amen. He, he, see, these scriptures were written about who, about Paul that always causes us to triumph. He was going to cause Paul to triumph. Mm -hmm. And so he says, cheer up. In a very desperate situation, cheer up. Put mm -hmm. a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. a, a, what's a frown? A, a, a frown is a smile that's turned upside down. <laughs> I'll just turn that frown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preaching to somebody tonight. Yep. <laughs> Probably somebody in the life. Even though I'm looking at Bill. That's about who I am, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God. Say that with me. I believe God. I believe God. God. I believe God. I believe God. Oh, God. A powerful word. I believe yes. God. Yes. I believe God. He's saying, I believe what was told to me. Glory, glory, glory. I believe those prophetic words that have been spoken over me. I, I, I believe what Brother Beckley has spoken. I believe yeah, what yeah. Brother Greg has spoken. Yep. Yeah. Brother Beckley was here many years ago, and we, we, we owed quite a bit of money on this building right here. And, and uh, he said to me, Brother Riley, I had a dream. I said, what would tell the congregation about your dream? He said, are you sure? I said, sure, we, we, we're big enough, but we can handle it. He said, okay. So he gets up here and he says, I had a dream about, you know, about the church and the people in the church. He says, we were all down in the basement. And it was just packed full of people. And there was a, a toilet stall that was there that was enclosed. And there was a woman in the stall sitting on the toilet. But the door is closed, you can't see her. <laughs> and she sang, uh, please somebody hand me some tissue. And he says, all the congregation are walking by. She said, please, could somebody hand me some tissue? Please, is there somebody that can hand me some tissue? And we're all going by, not paying any attention. And finally, Brother Beckley says, well, I'm there. And he says, uh, uh, I'll get her some. So he goes and gets a roll of tissue and reaches under there and hands it to her. 
He says, do you know what the meaning of the dream is? I don't know if I necessarily want to go there. <laughs> yeah. He said, the meaning of the dream is I want to wipe this debt out. I want to wipe the debt because we owed money on this building. Oh, for heaven's sake. I want to wipe it out. Because, it, 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 you know, God doesn't want you to be in debt. That's good news. God wants you debt free. Yes. Let me say that again. God wants you to be debt free. Amen. He doesn't pull you down and drain you because you're worried. How am I going to pay my bills? Because you've got credit cards that are packed, you know, up to the max. God wants you to be debt free. He'll, yeah. he'll get you that way. If you yes. 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 And so that spurred us to begin to raise money. And I had a man come to me and, and we had to raise, I think we had to come up with, to pay everything up, we had to pay off, uh, I, if I remember, Dr. Evans would know, I think $157,000 something like that. We just had to do that. But in a, in a, in a couple of years, uh, I had a man come to me, he said, ain't never going to happen here, Pastor. It ain't going to happen. Because your people are too poor to do it. Well, maybe our people were poor, but we have a very rich father. Amen. And the money come in, 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 and, in, and we burn the mortgage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We burn the mortgage. Praise God. Because God wanted to wipe that debt out. It was a prophetic word from heaven. You had prophetic words spoken over your life. Might be goodness to believe some of those things. Amen. How there stood by me this night an angel of God of whose I am and whom I serve. He said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for thou must stand before Caesar. You and everybody will be saved. Now, right after this, as they're getting ready, the ship is about to crash and, and be broken up on an island. Mm -hmm. And the soldiers said, because there's several hundred prisoners on there, they pulled their swords out and said, We need to kill all the prisoners. But remember, the word of the Lord said, not a single one would die, somebody right. would die. Mm -hmm. And so it was, even though it looked like everybody was going to die, that was a prisoner, including Paul, they said, no, let their change loose, let set them loose. Yeah. And they, everybody jumped into the sea, swam to the island. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on in chapter 28. It's always good to remember this one, too. I hope you guys are about ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 28, verse 1, and when they had escaped, they knew that the island was called uh, uh, Melita, and the barbarous people there showed us no little kindness, in other words, they were very kind. For they kindled a fire and received every one of us because of the present rain, because of the cold. You thought, man, you talk about a depressing picture. <laughs> My boat sinks, I haven't eaten in days, and then we're here on an island. And, and it's raining and it's cold and, and the people are you know, building a fire for us and, and it says and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire there came out a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand this is a very poisonous snake and when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand I think, can you imagine that? here's the snake I mean it's just it's clamped onto him and his, his fingers are in his hand in him, and it's just dangling there it just didn't bite him and and, and let loose, his, the veins are stuck in yep. stuck in his hand, yep. stuck in his wrist, whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. And when they saw this venomous beast hanging on his hands, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, mm -hmm. whom we saw that had, had escaped the, the justice of the sea, but yet vengeance suffers him not to live, very deadly thing. And he shook off the beast in the fire and felt no harm. There's just something, you know what? It just tells us there's some things you need to shake off. Right. There's some things that are just deadly poison. Just shake them off. Yes. Shake them off. Right. Oh, that's easy for you to say, Pastor. Well, yeah, it is. Shake them off because we all have to do it. Right. Shake right. those things off. Yep. Those things are meant to kill you. Yes. Right. But see, he was busy about the Father. Remember what the, the angel said? You've got to appear before Saul or before Caesar. Caesar. Mm. Ain't no snake going to take his life. Nope. No snake is going to take his life. No shipwreck is going to take his life. No angry soldiers that want to kill him. Nobody's going to be able to take his life. It's not time. Why? Ah. Because God's caused him to have the victory. 
He's going to triumph. And we celebrate, we're celebrating even tonight the triumph that Paul went through in this thing. Amen? Amen. Are we ready tonight? Yeah. What are we going to do? Well, yeah. we each got a different song. <laughs> so we have two. Two? Is that okay? Two is better than one. <laughs> yeah. I want to just tag on to what Pastor Hartley. Uh, we came in and just sat down, so of course we didn't know enough about the comfort of the so it's a guarantee we didn't get a little feed from Pastor Hartley. Um, but the word overcome came to me, and, uh, you know, a little bit sleepy. And so a couple different things came from, from that word is, it's not just about overcoming. Um, you've heard people say, oh, I just feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Or I was just overcome by the heat. Or, mm -hmm. or this was just too much for me to carry and overwhelm. But remember the word overcome also is a military term. Yes. And if you have the angels of God with you, yes. you're not the one who's overcome. Mm -hmm. The enemy is overcome. Mm -hmm. It's a military term for being overrun. Yeah. There's just not enough enemy to stand against. Yeah. There's yeah. not. That's right. There's not. And that's just the way it is. That's God's word. Mm -hmm. okay? Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, first John five. Yeah. And everyone that loves him that love begat loves him also that is begotten of him, so that we love one another. Mm -hmm. By this we know we love the children of God, that we love God and keep his commandments. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. If we, if we love God, it's, it's a desire. It's in us. He puts in us. He changes us. So whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Yes. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. We are overcomers just by virtue of how we're born. Right. We're born into the kingdom. That's what we are. Mm -hmm. Who is he that overcomes the world? Who is he that overcomes the world? This is one that got me a long time ago. I mean, oh, I got to do all these things. We got to pray for 17 hours a day. Yeah. Uh -huh. All this. But he said that in another place in First John, I also said, what is this we have to do? We have to believe on him who was sent. Yes. Who is he that overcomes the world? Even he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. That's core. Yes. You are an overcomer by that virtue oh, and yeah. that virtue alone. Oh, these yeah. things I have spoken unto you, like yes. tonight, through Pastor Whitewood. Yes. Jesus said, I spoken unto you that you might have peace in the world beyond tribulation. Mm -hmm. But be of good cheer, I will overcome the world. He's gone ahead of us. He's done all of this. Yes. And I'm so grateful for that. Yes. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he believed Jesus is the Son of God. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is amidst the paradise of God. The tree of life. That's available for you now. You partake yes. of the Spirit and the things of the Lord. He will give you what you need for life. Oh, yes, amen. I could go on with this one. But uh, suffice it to say, we will we'll play a song right now. But, uh, Can you set this up for me? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like <laughs> Which one do you want to do first, please? Um, I got it plugged into something. I don't know what it is. It's okay. Can you hear it out there? Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy in worship and wonder. I behold your face, singing what a faithful God have I. What a faithful God.
God's been impressing on my heart in the past few days about having a winning attitude. And you know, when you come into a fight, it, it, no matter what day you face, no matter whether it's sunny, rainy, windy, whatever, if you just say, God, I'm determined that I can be more than a conqueror in you, you can have a winning attitude. And the Lord will help you somehow. He'll give you grace to get through. And it's the same way with our giving. And um, uh, that we're going to uh, press through. You know, when you come to your breaking point, you can press beyond it. Yes. And you can believe God for a miracle. That's a good place for a miracle. Yes. So I'm not going to give up. It's too soon to give up. That's right. I see soon. my miracle, and yes. I'm running for that. I'm racing yes. for the prize of the Amen. Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus did. He, for the joy that was set before him, Praise the Lord. he endured the cross. Hallelujah. Why? Because he saw you and me. Uh -huh. He saw the prize. We were his prize. Isn't that something? Amen. We look at him. He's our prize, but we're his prize. Hallelujah. And uh, when you see his great love, his great love, yes. you have grace to go one more step. You can press beyond your breaking point to your breakthrough point, Hallelujah. to the breaker anointing point, yes. to the overthrow, yes. and you can have everything you've been believing God for oh, yes. if you're determined to press in. Yes. Everything. Yes. everything. Yes. And, and you know, we can have the hundredfold return if we don't give up. Amen. We can have the promises that have been prophesied over us if we don't give up. That's right. And, and that's the the turning point key, if you will, is to have that never give up, unbendable, unbreakable Amen. faith. You hang on in there, you get Amen. the word of God that I'm more than a conqueror, yes. and, and you just get that. <laughs> mm. You know, you can look at a person's face and see if they got it. Yeah. Right. You can look at a person's face and see if, if in their eyes they have determination right. to press in. Amen. You can, and, and you know, the grace is there for every one of us. No matter what I've gone through, hard times, my husband dying, whatever, I always said, when I walk through that door, I'll have the grace to meet whatever I've got to meet. And it was always there. Amen. And then God asked me to give big in offerings. You know, I just believed if I do it, there's my miracle on the other side. Hallelujah. You know, you may be in a corner at the Red Sea, but the Red Sea will part if you'll press in. Right. You know, the, the leader of the tribe of Judah, it says in Josephus' writings, that as soon as Moses lifted up his rod and the water was still there, Nashon from the tribe of Judah was on his horse prancing into the water. I'm going to press in. I'm going to make a dash for it. I'm going to believe God. I'm going ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Amen. Keep going until you get through it. Because God's got victory and a miracle for you. Praise God's got God. a financial miracle for Praise you. God. Everyone here, God's got a miracle of breakthrough for you. Praise Amen. God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> so give with a winning attitude tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It may look like you've been cornered, but God isn't cornered. Amen. He'll part that sea for you, for me. He doesn't change. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Well, Lord, we come to you as more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We have the victory. We're pressing in for the victory, for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And we are determined, we will see, we will gain everything that you have for us. And we will not quit until we see it. 
And we give you praise and glory for the victory now, Hallelujah. even before we see it. Hallelujah. And we receive everything you have for us. Yes. Our breakthrough, the anointing, Hallelujah. and everything that we need to be yeah. more than conquerors yeah. and to be winners. Yes. We take it in Jesus' yeah. name. Yes. 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 Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I really enjoyed your message. Hallelujah. I love listening to Pastor Mike. He's got the wisdom of God and he's seasoned with salt. I preached on the salt this morning. Praise God. You know, we got to be salty people for the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Jesus said salt is good. You know, I, I told the congregation this morning, I don't care what doctors ever say, I'm going to always put salt on my food. <laughs> doctors will say, don't use salt. Jesus said, salt is good. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, in, in Proverbs 13, in verse 12, I believe, there's, there's a very powerful scripture that goes right along with what Pastor Bightley was saying tonight. But it says a hope deferred. Make the heart sick. But it, it, if, if you let me paraphrase it, if you will just wait on the revelation of the seed. Right. Because the revelation is in the seed. When a seed falls in the ground and it dies, what springs up is the revelation of the seed. Yes. And, and it goes on to say that when it's fully come, if you wait for it, it will be a tree of life unto you and it won't be a curse to you. Right, yeah. Wait on the Lord. Now, waiting on the Lord is a good thing. When you wait on the Lord, you can get accurate information. When you wait on the Lord, you, you entwine yourself with Him. You entwine yourself with the Word. And you just get closer and closer to Him. And, and while, it, see, in the waiting, sometimes, you know, what happens is, is what is Jesus talked about in, in Matthew uh, chapter 5 and verse 4. It says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's, it's interesting to note that that word mourn in the Hebrews is, and, and, and wait, they're pretty much identical. They both mean the same thing. Now sometimes when you're waiting, it feels like you're mourning. It's, it is sick to you. And, and it's, it's, but if you wait, you will be comforted. We have the comfort that we know that when the season has come, the seed will bring forth the revelation and it will be a tree of life. It takes time for a tree to grow, especially here in New Brunswick. <laughs> you know, I, I was visiting my brother's place the other day and uh, I drove by this huge marsh and, and now you can see the lake that's there, but before then it was all mature trees and they had grown and, and a few years ago, that they, they logged it, and they, they cut all the trees down. But now, you see all the fresh new growth is coming up. Yeah. A whole new generation of trees. Yes. And it really looked quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take about 50 years before they can harvest it. Yes. But when the fullness of time has come, it will bring life. Hallelujah. So take heart tonight. If, if, if you're waiting for something and you feel like you're in mourning, don't quit. I know. <laughs> you know. Sometimes I like to tell people, I'm like a little bulldog. I just keep pushing my way through. And I don't say that to brag. If it, if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for the Lord, a lot of things in my life wouldn't have happened. But I'm just stubborn enough not to give up. Hallelujah. Praise God. you got to be stubborn in the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I can get a lot more, you know, from just believing God and shouting at him all night. You want to shout at him, but shout at the devil. He's the one that's deaf. <laughs> He's the one that doesn't want to hear. He's the one that doesn't want to move. Amen. But when you shout, glory, in the name of Jesus, I'm moving ahead. The devil will move out of the way. Amen. I, and I'll just say this real quick. I love what Pastor Gary said one time. You know, people will spend a lot of money paying for how to cast the devil out. Well, I learned just like he did. You tell him, shut up, come out in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. There, it didn't cost you anything, right, Pastor Gary? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 It'll work. Hallelujah. 
So I, I enjoyed the message. You know, I, I don't come here looking for a place to preach. I come here looking for a place to get fed. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I love, like I said, Pastor Gary and his ministry. I love all you people. And so praise God. I hope Hallelujah. Hallelujah. many sermons will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, well, we already did the offering. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to give you an idea of what's going on here at Fredrickton Word of Faith uh, this uh, this week. We want to welcome the faces here that aren't normally here for every service. We want to tell you how much we love to have you with us tonight. We just really pray that what happened in the service tonight touched your heart and blessed you. We know some of you are leaving healed, you're leaving whole, you're leaving encouraged, and and that blesses us to know that this is a place that that can happen. Amen? Amen. So, for our congregation, anybody else that would like to join us, Tuesday night we have prayer at 7 o'clock with Sister Kathy O'Hara. Yes. And she starts off with a little bit of teaching. And then after that, they go to prayer. Wednesday is our midweek service. Yes. And we have a good time here with word and worship. Yes. This Friday night is our blessing service. Now, we used to call it a miracle night. And uh, then we had a word from Brother Dale Bagley, and it kind of changed our way of looking at things. So now we just come that first Friday of every month just to come to bless the Lord. We come to walk in that blessing and the promises of God, just knowing that He has provided it all. It's there for us to step into. Amen? Amen. So that's about it. So that's our week coming up. And then, of course, next Sunday again, two services. So thank you so much for coming. And uh, God bless you. And be safe driving home. Angels go with you. And that's it. Amen. Oh, and if anybody needs prayer, if anything you need prayer about, just come on up and we'll be happy to pray for you tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless. Glory. Amen. Okay.